<laughs> Hello and welcome to Video Tarot Live. I'm your host, Shelly Carney, and this is my bestie, Toby Eunice. We're here today to talk about small set photography and specifically focusing on the splash shot. So that would be like when you're dropping something into a liquid and you catch that splash with the shot. And we do it where we have to coordinate not only the camera, but also the flash and everything else going on with it. So we're going to show you more about that and all the equipment that we used and how we got that shot that you could see on that thumbnail. That And Toby's going to show you a bunch of pictures that show you the setup, the shot itself, and, um, you know, all the things that are involved. I had a video that I wanted to play first, which this this setup is slightly different from the one that we had last week or or last uh, Monday. Monday, uh, but there's a lot of things that are the same. So I'm going to play that same video, give you a sense. Now you have to remember, I am a retiree, and I don't have a photographic studio. All my photography occurs in my dining room. Uh, because it's the one that has the most space. You can't do it in any of the bedrooms. We've turned this bedroom into a uh, studio space. And oh, by the way, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, uh, Shelly and I will be going live and we're going to talk about our studio uh, setup. And we're going to show you all the equipment that we have in here uh, to give us the ability to stream live on Amazon and a lot of other different platforms. So first of all, let's play this video really quick. What's up? Amazon Live, thanks for joining Shelley and I today. Today we're gonna to talk about the equipment that we use for small set photography. And we're gonna start right at the beginning with uh, an explanation of the tripod we use and why we selected it, the tripod head that we use and why we selected it, and the camera. Uh, we're using replica studio surfaces uh, here today, but we'll be showing you some other surfaces. In addition to that, for today's shoot, we've chosen the Godox Strip Softbox. Uh, it's uh, 30 centimeters by 90 centimeters. We'll talk about that. It also has a grid on it that we'll show you later on when we show you the product. Lighting today comes from a Godox 860 flash unit uh, supported by this beautiful gold reflector. We're using gold to make everything a warm color. And all we've done is selected some uh, heirloom tomatoes, onions, and garlic uh, in a bowl, a beautiful bowl that belongs to uh, Shelly. In addition to that, I guess I should mention that we're using the Godox uh, V Pro X Pro uh, um, wireless flash connector so that we can fire the flash and we don't have to get up on, we don't have to connect a wire to that. I'll be using my iPad during the shoot as uh, to tether to, but I'm also using my iPad to uh, shoot this video. So we'll show that to you later. All right. Thanks for watching. You know what? I need you to cover for a second. Can you do that? Okay. I forgot uh, two items that I want to show today. All right. All right. No problem. So, so go ahead and talk through kind of. Well, okay. I Toby's uh, gathering up the things he wants to be able to show them to you. Uh, of course, we have we'll have them on the screen as well, uh, and as we describe them, please take a moment now to follow us by clicking that follow button. And we are planning to go live two to three times a week, and we'll be doing instruction every time. So this week we're focusing on small set photography. We're also going to talk about uh, live streaming equipment, podcast. Casting, um, all different kinds of photography. We'll be talking about microscopy, which is using a microscope and taking pictures through the microscope. Uh, so all kinds of great information that we'll be covering in this live stream that we offer. So please do follow by clicking on that follow button. Um, I'm going to put up our banner here so we can... Uh... Let's see, video tarot. there we go, that's our banner. So um, although you're seeing us on Amazon Live, we are not using uh, the Amazon Live app on the smartphone to get here. We're using our streaming product called uh, StreamYard. So that's why we can do some of these uh, little extra things. <laughs> All right, so I think it's a little <laughs> breath. Okay, so let's talk about first the photo that I wanna talk about today. That, that didn't make any sense. Let's talk about the photo. So the photo is here, and it's called a splash shot. 
And uh, there's not a lot of props. You can see I have a decanter. Now that decanter was filled. So Shelly and I come from a film background, a filmmaking background. And usually in film, they don't use real whiskey. Um, about 70% of the time they use a, a watered down version of tea. Uh, and then there's other formulas up to and including, uh, what's that spritzer soda thing? What's that called? Soda streamer. Soda stream. The cola flavored, uh, the cola flavor of soda, soda stream can be used. Uh, the mistake that I made is I didn't use just a plain whiskey. I, uh, the, I went looking for the, since I knew this was going to be a splash on it, I went, waste of it. I went looking for the cheapest bottle of whiskey I could find. And it was an $8 bottle of caramel flavored whiskey. So not only did it have the light sugars that come in a whiskey, it also had the sugars associated with the caramel flavor. I'm going to show you what we had to do because it, it, it you can expect that when you do splash shots, you can make a mess, uh, but you shouldn't make a sticky mess because it gets everywhere. It gets under the set. It gets on the floor. Uh, it was funny because at some point I literally had to take off my shoes because my shoes were just sticking to one part of the floor and then I'd walk it over to another part of the floor. So it was, it was kind of fun for us. But this is called a splash shot. It's all about timing. Now, uh, there is a device called Arsenal, uh, which gives you the ability to make this kind of shot without a lot of difficulty. It actually triggers your camera for you. The problem is that they don't have an Arsenal model for the brand of camera that I have. I use the Panasonic Lumix Micro Four Thirds cameras and uh, Arsenal doesn't make that. And so there's not an, uh, an option other than uh, Shelly standing over the glass with uh, one of the ice cubes and saying, me saying drop and then firing, firing the camera and the flash from uh, the uh, tethered computer. So uh, it's actually kind of cool and a lot of fun. It took us what, how many shots did it take to get it right? Probably about 15 to 20. Yeah, somewhere in the 15 to 20 range, but it was good and it was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we got the shot. We got the splash shot. So you can see uh, right here the ice cube falling on top of the liquid. And you, you have to remember we did this one right after we made this shot. So we made this shot for uh, first, which is called a pour shot. I'm going to refresh that because... That isn't in full resolution. Let's, there we go. So that's called a pour shot. Uh, so we had a very nice pour shot, well lighted, same lighting setup. And we thought, you know what we need to do? Let's do the splash shot. And so we went to the splash shot and uh, that's what uh, that's what we got. Uh, but like I said, the pour shot took us three to four tries. And that was an issue associated with how we wanted it to look, f-stop and uh, shutter speed. Uh, this one took us 15 to 20. And the reason you get that stop motion is because you, in order to get the stop motion on a uh, splash shot, you have to use a flash because your camera may be set to 1 50th of a second. That's not going to stop the splash. It, it expects that the the uh, flash is going to stop it. Um, did I say I'm not going to stop the flash? So it's a uh, normal lighting, continuous lighting is not going to stop the splash in motion. It'll just show as a motion. If you want to stop the splash, you have to use a flash. And in this case, it was a flash that was inside a um, a uh, diffuser, a softbox. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's the equipment we're going to talk about uh, today. So let me go back to... Let me get us back in the, in the shot here first while I'm doing this. So you can find our shop at store.videotero.com. And it's uh, you can see everything. all this information is scrolling uh, in the crawl uh, below us. Uh, but here's what it looks like. Oh, look, there we are. I can watch now. Is that microphone, that speaker off? Yeah. So uh, this is what our store looks like. And this has all the equipment. And if you just scroll down, it, it actually, because we're live streaming right now, it has our live stream on there. It has the featured item that Shelly uh, has pointed out. But I'm going to open up the small set photography uh, kit because everything I'm going to talk about today is in this kit. All right. 
So the first thing that I'm going to recommend that when you do this, if you're going for a splash sh shot, whether it is in a, uh, in this case, a whiskey glass, it's not a shot glass, it's a whiskey glass, or a glass of wine, start with something that's made of crystal. Now, I didn't happen to buy this set. I actually found uh, a crystal glass at one of the thrift stores here in town uh, called Savers. Savers. Uh, and they had a crystal glass. And what you're going to notice is that the crystal, uh, first of all, is much heavier. Secondly, it is much more durable. Thirdly, these are cuts in the crystal. Uh, they're not poured to make these shapes. They're actually cut. And because of that, they give a lot more, they amplify what's happening on the light. And I'll, I'll go back to the photo and just take a, a, a quick look. Can I, can I blow that shot up? Yeah, I guess I can. So take a look at all the things that are happening with light uh, inside of that glass. And that's because it's crystal. Now, I couldn't find this particular model uh, on in Amazon, but I did find these that I think are really good looking and have uh, some angles on them so that you can uh, do some things with the light. You know, they're pretty good looking. It's a set of four for 39. There's a $20 discount right now, 33%. And you can save an extra 25% when you apply this coupon. So that means it saves you another $10. So you'll get this $60 set for half price effectively. Uh, but it's crystal and you're going to find it's heavy. The second thing that I, that the reason I get crystal is even the uh, mouth of it is hev heavily made. It's thick so that when one of those ice cube hits it, it doesn't break. If you were to drop an ice cube from just literally 12 inches above on one of your glasses at home, uh, there's a good chance or if it's if it's glass, not say plastic, uh, there's a good chance you're going to chip the glass. Uh, with crystal that it has happened once or twice to me in a 50 year career. Uh, but since I got the crystal glasses, the heavy crystal glasses, and I look for the heaviest one I can find and you can go to your thrift stores, mm -hmm. right? Shelly, Shelly introduced me to savers and I thought it was just about clothing, but they have a whole section dedicated to housewares. And what's neat about it is people take their things there, their used items, and it may not be a set of four. I don't need a set of four. I need one. And sure enough, I paid $1.99 for this crystal glass. And like I said, it's it's pretty heavy. And that's what I like about it. Okay. So um, crystal glass is a good place to start. And again, it doesn't have to be a whiskey glass. You can find crystal wine glasses, although I'm hesitant even with crystal wine glasses to start dropping plastic ice cubes in them uh, because they're just, you know, they're very thin. That's kind of the nature of a wine glass. So let me go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the next piece of this kit. And that is these plastic ice cubes. Now, I will tell you that plastic ice cubes come in all kinds of price ranges. I once paid $270, $275 for a single plastic ice cube. It was a two and a half inch ice cube and I had to get the two and a half inch ice cube and it was pretty realistic looking, but it was $275. This one is a set of 20 pieces and you can see it's not perfect. I mean, it's a it's supposed to look like an ice cube. The other thing is they're all made from pretty much the same mold. Like I, I can't tell how much of a mold there is, but it's pretty much the same mold. Right, let, me, let me open up our screen here so you can see it a little bit closer. So here they are. They're uh, the 1.2 inch models. They're probably measured in, in uh, centimeters and it comes out to 1.2 inches. But when you're shooting a shot like that, you don't want to have to worry about the ice melting on you, making an even bigger mess, diluting the color of the drink. It's swirl. It actually shows a swirl when it does. Just go with a plastic ice cube. There's 20 of them here for nine bucks. Um, and um, they're in our store and you can see them in the uh, in the stream carousel. Uh, carousel. So plastic ice, ice cube helps. Now, I didn't have, so I'm going to tell you, I didn't have this one necessarily planned. Uh, and it's kind of funny. It's a funny place to be inside a... Uh, uh, program where we're talking about photography and making splash shots. But when you're making splash shots, it literally makes a mess. The set, the in our case, the uh, 
the uh, replica surfaces set got sticky. It got under the set on my dining room table. Uh, it got everything around it sticky. We had to keep wiping the bottle down. We had to keep wiping the flower plant down. Uh, it just made a mess. And because I used that whiskey that had the car caramel flavoring in it, uh, it was just sugar everywhere. And as I said, there was a point at which I literally had to go in the, in the uh, living room, take off my shoes at the edge of the living room in the kitchen. My, my kitchen is tiled, as you'll see in some of the behind the scene shots. It's tiled, but I was sticking, my shoes were sticking to everything. I had to take them off and literally the next morning I washed them off. But I went out into the garage. I, that's where I keep my steamer. And that's all I use to clean my floor anymore. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but uh, I'm a very meticulous person. So on weekends, I clean my house, I vacuum my, my carpet, and I steam clean my uh, kitchen floor, kitchen and bathroom floors. And uh, to do that, I'll take my vacuum and I vacuum them first. And then I take the steam cleaner and I steam clean. The advantage to the steam clean is there's not mops and soaps and waters and, you know, splashing down the water and then picking up the water. You turn on the steam cleaner. Um, and uh, once it's rolling, you just go over your floor. Uh, it comes with a, uh, three pads with the package, two pads with the package. They look like, let me see if we got them here. You can buy extra pads uh, with it. Um, and uh, and what you do, what I do, and again, because I'm, I'm a little bit more meticulous than most people, not, not I shouldn't say that, I'm meticulous. Uh, so I steam it once, I let it dry, and then I steam it a second time. And again, I get a beautifully clean floor. You can actually see the second time. You're not, you don't pick up anywhere near you, what you did on the first time. And but, the cool thing about the shark is you can flip that head. So you get the bottom dirty. And if you want to go over a new room or go over it a second time, you can flip the head right. so that it's faced the other direction and, and clean it with the clean side. Right. So uh, that actually makes it very cool and very easy to use. And it cleans it up in, in one you know, one pass. Um, and right now it's on sale for $69.99. Yeah, that's $89.99. So there's $20, $20 off on uh, it today if you want a good uh, cleaner. And again, I wouldn't normally mention this in a, uh, in a show where we talk about a photography kit, uh, but uh, it was just funny because, you know, I actually used it as part of our uh, setup. There's the additional, I also even posted that, okay. So there are the additional pads. Uh, there are one, two, three, four pads for twenty-one ninety-nine. You can buy a two-pack for nineteen. So might as well get the four. You can pack. get those in the carousel. You got them in the store. Yeah, I did put them in the store. Okay. Yeah. So let's go on to the set itself, and I'm going to show you the picture, and you can see uh, that's why we call this smart set. Now I happen to use replica surfaces, small sets. Uh, but there are plenty of alternatives on uh, Amazon, and I'm going to show you one in a minute. But what I'm talking about is this background and this floor. And Replica Surfaces calls this background uh, warm, dark wood, and this floor is called sheet pan. And they're two of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I end up taking a lot of photos with just these two. I own about 12 or 14 of them, uh, but I use these a lot because they're the look. I, I, I prefer... Uh, what I'd call a masculine look rather than a feminine look to my photos. Not because I'm misogynistic, but that's kind of what I Darkish. shoot. Darkish. Darkish, yeah. And I shoot a lot of dark food photography, so I like I like the dark uh, backgrounds. Let me see if I can show you some other pieces here. If uh, show you something that I've done recently, it's got a kind of darkness to it. Uh, uh, and the glass with the smoke. The glass with the smoke. Yeah, that's the one right there. That one. So I, those are all replica surfaces. Now, I, I warrant, uh, oh, oh, I'm not, it's a, not a warning, but um, replica surfaces, like other of its competitors, start at two feet square. So it limits the size of your set, right? You, you make a decision. There are, there's one manufacturer that makes a three foot square. There's another manufacturer that makes them from two foot square to full size stand up. 
Uh, but I like the replica surfaces because it truly is a small set. And one of the things about having that small set is it kind of requires you to think about exactly what you're going to do with this shot. You don't have a lot of room to work with. Even when you do a flat lay from overhead, let me show you what one of those looks like. You're still working with a two foot square surface. So imagine trying to get this story in, which is, you know, Italian restaurant story, trying to get that into two square feet. Now that's another one of their wood products. It's a light wood product as opposed to the dark wood. Uh, but that's called a flat lay and you're still only working with two square feet. So it forces you to be a little bit more creative when it comes to your styling so that you're not, um, so that you're not just jamming everything together so that you're still telling a story. This is my story of an Italian cafe, right? Uh, uh, Chianti and olive oil and balsamic vinegar and crostini and, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, garlic, because I did put some chopped garlic in the middle of the, uh, I like garlic, and uh, put some chopped garlic in the middle of the oil and vinegar. So uh, you can use them in a variety of ways for that small set photography. Ne Over this weekend, I'm going to be shooting some necklaces uh, for a friend of ours, and I'll save those photos and, and background setup. I'm using a completely different setup for jewelry than I do for these uh, food photographs. So we'll talk about that uh, in uh, in one of the upcoming shows. All right, let me go back to my, what we're talking about today here. By the way, you can find all of these photos on my Pexels account, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. And I am at sign T units, T-Y-O-U-N-I-S. And if you like one of these photos, uh, you can actually download it from Pexels for free, if you'd like. It'll ask you if you want to donate something. Um, but you can find them all on Pexels if you say, well, I really like that photo. I want a copy of it on my living room wall or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what people do with them. I put them on my living room wall. Or make an ad or a calendar or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So again, when we talk about this shot, it was the same shot as the uh, as the poor shot. And we had the Godox um, uh, strip softbox as well as the Cedars um, reflector. And then Shelly was pouring from over on this side because I wanted her hand lighted. And if you remember the pour shot, let's see, I think that's just before this one, right? So that's the same setup. I moved the flowers over to one side and that's the light on Shelly's hand uh, from the uh, soft box. And I put it, <laughs> I'm a hand artist. And I put the flash slightly behind uh, the shot so that I could get light through here, coming through it, as opposed to reflecting off it, light here. But most importantly, what gives you this definition in the poor stream is the fact that it's lighted from behind. So that's another secret. And you can see that right here uh, a, a little bit. I mean, you can't see it exactly, but it's at an angle and behind the shot itself so that you can get that, uh, that color and definition in the poor uh, stream. And we're going to be talking about that and uh, those others in just a minute. So let's go back to uh, our reflectors. Now, this is one of several on Amazon. Reflectors? I'm sorry. Uh, surfaces. surfaces, either background or floor. And that's what we call them, backgrounds or floors. Now, ref uh, replica surfaces, which honestly I love. It's one of my favorite surfaces. I use other manufacturers' surfaces. Replica surfaces has an Amazon store but they only have two of their products in that Amazon store. And actually, I think it's only one product. It may only be one product uh, of dozens. They have dozens of products. And if you want to go look for I don't know whether I can do this on Amazon, but go to replicasurfaces.com. Now, there are other manufacturers that do have broader product lines on the store, and they're just as nice, they're just as adorable, and they have the same size, and they work in the same way. And they're about the same price. What's different about Duo Board is that they have a, uh, a, an image on one side and uh, another image on the reverse. So you get two for the price of one. And I'll give you an example. This is not a criticism of re replica surfaces. When you pay this much at replica services, uh, surfaces, you get one board, one surface. With uh, Duo Board, you get two surfaces for about the same price. Now there's another one with whom we are uh, 
trying to reach out to who may think about sponsoring us when it comes to that point. And we may have some to show you next week, some different ones to show you next week. But they're all kind of about the same, right, with these different models of uh, surface colors and uh, and depth and textures, but it's all a picture and they do it really, really well so that in the photo, it looks almost realistic. Here's, here's one of theirs that has a wood. It's called butcher block, right? They have darks. They have, let's see, where's a good light combo? Uh, light right there. Uh, they have combos that look like tile, look like wood, uh, more tile, uh, more wood in brown and gray. So um, uh, I haven't used replica surfaces. I'm sorry, I haven't used this brand, but I've watched all their videos and they pretty much do something similar to replica surf surfaces. And you get two for the price of one because they do both front uh, and back. So I can't necessarily recommend them in the sense that I've used them, but I've looked at them from the analytical perspective in comparison to uh, what I'm using now. And you're thinking about buying them next time. And, right. I'm going to buy one, of course, just to try it out. Uh, and there's another manufacturer that I'm going to order some boards from uh, in order to try them out as well. Now, remember, you still have to buy two of these, even though they have uh, two, sides. two sides. In order to have a wall and a floor, you have to have two of them because they don't bend around each other. They're very durable. They are, they're all waterproof and spill proof, which is why you want these when you're doing these small sets, especially when it comes to splash photography. I do a lot of uh, food photography and eventually you're going to spill something. The other day I, um, I had an, uh, a, um, what's the, I can't believe I remember, don't remember the, the red thing with a little arrows and pomegranate side. pomegranate jeez so i had a pomegranate inside by the time i was done there were little they're, they're called earls arrows arrows a-r-i-l-s is that what they're arrows i thought they were e arrows uh but the little seeds inside a pomegranate are called arrows right and i had them all over the set and they're sugary and of course they're sticking and things like that to the extent that i actually missed one in a follow-up shot and i had to photoshop the magic out of that one so, uh, but if you're going to do small set photography, you have a couple of options. One is to create your own sets in your own kitchen with your own natural lighting from a window, or you can start working with these uh, surfaces. And I've chosen to work with the surfaces. I think they give you a much more professional look on your, uh, on your photos. Okay. So let's go see what's next. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to open it another screen so I don't have to keep going back here. All right, so surfaces, let's talk tripod. Now, in the last show, I thought I had the right tripod up. I didn't. Um, this is the correct tripod. Now, this tripod is far more evolved, and uh, it's oh, the same as- You still as... have both of them in there. I do so have them. In the carousel, they're, but they're both in there. This is the 279-88. The other one is the 10- I thought I took it out. Oh. Well, oh, you know what? I have carousel. it in the carousel. Yeah. I, I must have left it in the carousel. I should have removed it. But this is the one that I'm talking about. I'm going to open it in a new tab, so I don't have to go back. Well, I featured it, so. Okay, good. So this is the uh, Manfrotto MT-190 uh, X Pro. I have the X Pro B. So they lettered them A, B, C, and then they went to the number four. So this is <laughs> this is the most current one. A, B, C, use. four. So I have had my, I've owned this particular tripod. I used to do a lot of traveling and I've owned this particular tripod for decades. Not, I'm, I didn't say that right. I've owned this particular model for decades. Uh, and one of them got uh, run over and I said Iraq, but I think it was Afghanistan. One of them, one of, they thought they were being funny. Some, some Marines, because they knew I was ex-army. Uh, they thought it would be funny. There's two things that neither that this product doesn't talk about. I mean, this uh, this listing here uh, doesn't talk about, and we'll go back to it in just a second. So you buy the tripod, and as you can see in the image, you buy it without a head. It's your choice. Now, Manfrotto makes heads. What I don't like about the Manfrotto photo heads is they have a uh, unique ma camera mounting surface. You have to have a, a Manfrotto uh, uh, camera mount uh, clip, right? 
So it's very different. This is an Arca Swiss, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. So you buy your own head. When you do, if you get a Manfrotto, you have to get Manfrotto camera mounts um, to fit in the Manfrotto heads. You can look around and you'll see why, why I picked this one in just a minute. Um, you can uh, look around and you can find Swiss Arca heads that use the Swiss Arca camera mount, and it's a un universal mount. It is a standardized mount. So that way you can take a camera uh, and move it from a tripod to a, a boom to a slider, all using Swiss Arca without ever, ever having to change your camera mount. So there are a couple of very cool things about this tripod that they don't mention in there. The first is when it comes to the tripod legs, it clicks out to a standard size, but if you press this down, it swings out to that that far. So if you wanted to, you can almost lay this tripod flat on the ground. They don't say that in there. I don't think oh. they even show a picture of it. And you don't need a hi-hat. Right, and you don't need a hi-hat. You don't need anything else. See, they don't even show a picture of that. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that makes this particular tripod unique. Another thing I like about them, tell me if I'm encroaching there, are there quick releases. You'll see a lot of tripods today using the round release mm, to tighten. Yeah. And you're going to find there are not only time consuming, but they're annoying in the sense that you eventually you're not going to tighten one enough and you're going to have your mount, the leg's going to fail and, and something's going to flip over. Crash. So these are tight, very tight Manfrotto mounts and very quick. So you pop it up, pull out your leg, and, and pop it back and lock it. So uh, that's the second reason, although that wasn't one of the things that make this particular, uh, this particular product so special. Here's the second thing that I think makes it special. There's a knob right here that enables me to release the tripod head and raise it another, what, 18 inches? But here's what's cool about that. I'm gonna press this button down here, and what I can do is I can flip this over on its side. So now I can make an overhead shot. And because of the legs, I have made shots using this feature and spreading out the legs using a macro lens on the front of the camera. And I've made a shot that was three inches off the ground and still steady because it was a tripod. And that's what this tripod features. Those are the things that are important. And I noticed that as they show it here, they, they show the lock but they don't show what it actually does. Let me let me go back to the uh, let me go back to the uh, listing. Not that I'm not that I you know going to criticize Manfrotto for it, but if I was going to show this Manfrotto tripod and I was selling them at Manfrotto's, you know, for Manfrotto, I would actually demonstrate the fact that you can make these legs go up to flat, basically, and that you can take this tripod. Uh, what part of the tripod is that? Tripod extension. I don't know what you're pointing at. Uh, this thing right here. This, oh, the center the post. Center, center post. And I don't know what I do. You know, as I get older, I'm just going to need you around all the time. I know. So that you can remind so can me what I'm trying you. to say. I can yeah. talk for you and Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what makes it such a good buy. And uh, it has um, metal stainless steel legs that are painted. So I'm telling you, it is a durable tripod. I've owned this one for probably, well, since I came back from Afghanistan. So this is probably uh, 20 to 12 years. I've owned this one for 12 years. And it'll go, this tripod, you could probably put it in the coffin next to me like he wanted to die with this tripod. You know, it'll outlast me. I'm sure my son uh, will, I should probably put it in the will and make it out to my son because he covets this tripod whenever he sees it. All right. <laughs> So let's do. But you can get your own for only two seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah. Now you can find this particular model, and you can see the model number is listed here. The uh, one ninety X Pro B, letter B. You can find them on eBay, but they're still priced. They haven't lost their value over the years. You will still pay next to you know close to the purchase price when you buy it on eBay used. But so you, you know, might as well buy it new. You that might way as well you get free returns if you right. change your mind. Buy it new, try it out. Um, it probably has some other features. I noticed that there's some details here. Uh, the red kind of ring there must be do, does something else. But you can see the opening on. Let's see, can I do that? 
once or twice. It has that opening, which is where it flips over on its side. And here are the thumb levers that I showed you. They're slightly different here. So this one, you press down. That one looks like you flip up and then spread the leg out and lock, lock it. Uh, and I thought this one said it had mm, aluminum legs. Mm -hmm. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are not, these are stainless steel. Uh, so this one's a little bit heavier, uh, the one that I, that I presently know. Yeah. So, um, but when they say it's a solid and fast setup, uh, with the power lock system, that's that it is a very fast setup in whatever mode you want. And like I said, I have made photographs on this tripod where the camera lens was three inches off the ground for a macro shot. So I love this tripod and I highly recommend it. And maybe if you guys buy this stuff, I'll get enough on commissions to buy the new one. Add to cart. Add to cart. Okay. Let's go to the tripod head. So uh, there are a lot of different tripod heads that you can buy for your camera. I'm uh, um, for your tripod and your camera. Uh, and most of them have three knobs for roll, uh, tilt, and yaw, okay? Uh, those are the three things that you can do with this, and you lock it in place, right? They, these are not like video cameras where, the, where you have them in motion. Uh, and uh, uh, video cameras are limited to pan and tilt, right? There is no yaw in a, a, a video camera uh, tripod head. Uh, so you have all of those things, but they're the, the thing that has gotten most popular, and I own one, and I should probably pull it out one of these days, is a very compact carbon fiber leg tripod, and it has a ball head on the top. Now, it does have one of these Arca Swiss mounts, but it has a ball head, and it has one knob, basically. And you take that knob, and you hold it, and you get it kind of adjusted to where you want, and then you make some adjustments to the camera legs, and then you make some adjustments to the ball head, et cetera, et cetera. It, there's a lot of fiddling around with it. It's very finicky and it doesn't always let you get where you want. The nice thing about this particular ball head is that it has these knobs, big, great big knobs and micrometer level movements. I don't see, I'm going to open, pull this into the screen again so you can see this. Right. So this is the camera. This is uh, for tilt right? And you can see I'm turning it a lot and it's just moving slightly. Now, if I want to move it a bunch at a time, I squeeze this back and I can move it a bunch at a time. So this is for tilt, this is for pan, and this is for yaw, right? The advantage is you're moving your camera in very slight increments as you're trying to make sure you're in the center of your shot or that you're focused on what you want to focus and that you're not off the set, right? So you can see the background so that you know you're not off the set with these very, very uh, minor movements that it has on here. This is the, they call it the Benro three-way. I thought there was a deal on it right now. Yeah. So it normally goes for two hundred twenty-four bucks. It's uh, on sale for one eighty-eight ninety-six, and it's you the save prime price. thirty-five dollars. Okay, so mm -hmm. the prime price—you have to be a prime member in order to get that price. Mm -hmm. But again, I've been using this one. I started using this one with my astro photography uh, because astro photography setups are again—they're very finicky. You have to be you start by pointing at the north star, right? and getting polar aligned. And then whatever you're putting up here in terms of motion for your uh, camera fits on it. It's very heavy duty. It adds to the overall weight of the tripod. But when you're trying to set up one of those small set shots that require little movements in order to be correct, you're going to love this particular uh, 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 camera mount. And again, it's Arca Swiss compatible, so it's got a universal compatibility. And that way, you can mount your Arca Swiss camera plate, camera mounting plate on your camera, and you can move your camera from a tripod to a slider, to a boom, to a monopod, and never have to change um, uh, the uh, camera mounting plate on your camera. Uh, and, and again, I'm not beating up on Manfrotto. I'm a big fan of Manfrotto, but they have a, what do they call it when it's unique to the company. There's a name for that. Proprietary. They have a, pr 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 a proprietary camera mounting system. 
uh, Arca Swiss is universal. And that's what, as a matter of fact, it's what you'll find on most ball heads uh, today. Okay. So that's the uh, Benro three-way geared head uh, model number GD3WH. Uh, and it says black, but I don't, to the best of my knowledge, it doesn't come in another color. Black and blue. And what, I, what I'll do the next time for the next show that isn't about, oh, we'll talk about what's happening tomorrow night, but on the show next week where we're talking about cameras, I'll bring my travel tripod out, which is, you know, carbon fiber legs, all aluminum, machined aluminum, and then a ball head on the top. Uh, and it's great for traveling. And it also has like a monopod feature. You can actually take one of the legs off and turn it into a monopod. We'll t I, I should have brought that on today, but we'll we'll talk about it next week. All right. So Manfrotto tripod and, and Benro, Benro three-way geared head. Okay. So let's go to the next. I keep doing that. I don't really want to. Let's go on to the next piece. And that is the camera that I use for my small set uh, photography. Crap. What? <laughs> what are we uh, I, I, The thing I need is over here. <laughs> oh, oh. Is that what you're looking for? Like, me. Hang on. <laughs> It's not my phone. <laughs> uh, now, are you looking for the Amazon Live app? Yeah. Is that what you were? Okay. That's, not... that's where I was. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Whew. The last Whew. it from You didn't there. lose it. You're still there. Okay. Whew. Uh So uh, what I want to talk about is the camera that I use for small set. Now, for most of my career, my 40-year, 40 45-year, 40, I don't know, 40, 50. 50-year career, mm -hmm. I used Nikon cameras exclusively. I started on them back in 1970 and just kept using them until around 2010. And my problem was that the DSLR industry was migrating from just still photography to still and video photography with DSLR cameras. And uh, Canon was making great leaps, Panasonic was making great leaps, Sony was making great leaps, and Nikon wasn't. And so in a, in a, a really heartfelt and hard to make decision on my part, I had to pick another brand because I was shooting more and more video stuff. Uh, I had shot documentary, a lot of documentaries uh, with the Nikons, but it was always a struggle because they had limitations. So I decided to go to another brand and I went to the Panasonic Lumix brand. I started with a pair of Lumix G7s that I bought around 2011, 2012 and I still have those cameras. It does have a um, lens, multiple lens mounting system. It uses the M43 mount, the Micro Four Thirds mount. That means you can buy lenses from Panasonic, you can buy them from uh, Olympus because they use the same mount, and you can buy them from third-party manufacturers with the M M43 mount. It's not called the Panasonic mount. It is the M43 mount. And like uh, like the uh, Swiss Arca head, it's a universal mounting system. So the one that I use, it, I don't use the G7s. Uh, the one that I use for my small set photography is the Lumix uh, G100. It is a 4K camera. And I'm going to move back to right. I keep forgetting that I'm on two screens, right? Uh, it's a 4K camera. It comes with a 12 to 32 or 36 zoom lens. Now, all uh, Lumix sensors are 2x crop factor. So right now, I think I have a, a 42, a 25 millimeter lens. On this camera, that's actually a 50 millimeter lens. So it's more like a normal lens on a full-size DSLR because of the 2X crop factor. So the lens that comes with it is 12 to 32. We'll go back. Yeah, 12 to 32. That means in reality, it's 24 to 64. That's that's how it shoots. Like you've got a lens that's 24 millimeters to 64 millimeters zoom. All right. Uh, but because it's micro four thirds, I can put a lot of other lenses on it. I like shooting my small sets with a prime lens. This one is 25. As I said, it shoots at 50, but it's very sharp and it has a really big F stop. It goes down to F 1.7. So it's very convenient for that. Now this camera comes with this combination handle, desktop tripod, and on the front front, it actually has a couple of buttons, one for taking a picture, one for making a movie. And that's because... Uh, Lumix positions this as their vlogging camera. 
right? They're, for people who are blogging, it makes great videos. It has a microphone system up front. It has a microphone system in the back, or you can use them simultaneously. And I've used the microphones, and although they're not like having a lapel microphone uh, on you, uh, they are really good microphones. Now, it also has a microphone plug right here. So if you wanted to mount the way that we use it is we mount a receiver on here and plug it into right there. Can, I, can you see that? Let's see if we can see it with a light. There we go. So you can plug it right into there. That's a 3.5 millimeter microphone mount. We put the receiver, wireless receiver up here, plug it into there, and we put a wireless transmitter on Shelly with a lapel mic. And that works beautifully. We do all our video work that way now uh, with a combination transmitter and receiver. We should have brought one of those. We'll, we need to add that to the store. Mm -hmm. um, write that down. Yeah, write that down. So write down um, lightweight tripod and uh, wireless mic. Okay. But again, it uh, Lumix positions it because you can turn the screen all the way so you're looking at it. Uh, around and then it plugs right into the camera on this side so you can start your video, start and stop your video or take a picture with these little knobbies that you see uh, on the front. So it's a very cool this, camera. Uh, this handle alone, they charge, what is it, $97.99 for? So. Oh, for the uh, tripod grip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it only works with this camera. And then the if you get the camera by itself, it's 647 So getting them together. So 650 uh, 750 as is opposed to, say, 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And look for deals because sometimes you'll see some of the camera, the big box camera sellers, they will have deals that they'll sell it to you for the 697 but they sell you a bunch of accessories. And when I bought mine, that's what I bought. It was on, there was a, it was Black Friday or so, maybe before kit. that. It was a vlogging kit mm -hmm. and it was, uh, this camera was on sale for six forty-seven, and um, and the big box manufacturers uh, on Amazon were selling it for six forty-seven with a bunch of accessories, including a backpack, you know, camera backpack and stuff like that. Oh, so, well, then yeah, oh, then you got to have the camera. <laughs> Must have the backpack. You got to have another camera backpack, right? Yay. Just just what I needed. So that's the Panasonic Panasonic Lumix G one hundred. Uh, 4K camera. It, uh, I think it's a uh, 40 megapixel. Is that what I want to say? 40 megapixel sensor. It is a micro four thirds sensor. It is not a full size uh, sensor, but it does have um, the ability to change lenses. You can buy. Uh, it'll like it'll come with that 12 to 32, which shoots at 24 to 64. But if you buy that and the 25 millimeter, you have a nice little you know, walk around town lens, uh, street photography lens with a 50 millimeter. And they also have, I also have the 42.5. Now, uh, these are the relatively inexpensive ones. They're around $200. The uh, Panasonic and Olympus may, both make zoom lenses, uh, 14 to 42, 42 to 140. They get a little bit more expensive. And if you do a lot of landscape photography, you want to consider them because I do set photography. I like the uh, prime lenses because I can move my tripod around pretty easily if I have to. Okay. So that's the Panasonic. Make sure you guys, if you have any questions, can you see questions in there? Oh, okay. Right yeah. Here. So if you guys have any questions, please ask them in the room and we'll be happy to answer them. And, um, if you have questions and you're watching this after it has been recorded and you have a question for us, please feel free to send us an email with your questions to support at videotero.com. Uh, and you'll see that as it's crawling, scrolling by in the crawl right there, support at videotero.com. So let's go to the next item on my list of toys that I play with here. And that will be, oh, I did, I already talked about that. So this is, the uh, 25 millimeter f1.7 lens that I use for small set photography. Uh, f1.7 gives you a lot of bokeh. So if you set it, if, as a matter of fact, it is amazingly short. Uh, so you actually, if you want to, you get the full set in focus, you have to open up your f-stop just a little bit more. At f1.7, if I remember correctly on my depth of field tables, the area of focus is three inches deep. After that, what's in front of that is out of focus, and what's behind that is out of focus. And if you have that problem, uh, can I? I'm going to take this for just a moment and give it back to you because I want to tell them about 
I don't, I don't think this is, I'm sure it's not on Amazon. Uh, there's a product, an app that runs on your smartphone or your, oh, where was I? Tablet? No, but I mean. What? What, where was I in terms of watching us? Okay, here. Blue. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't you didn't do this. anything. Um, there is a app that you can buy for your phone called Photographer's Friend. And uh, it's free, and it helps you calculate things like depth of, field, uh, depth of field, hyperfocal distance based on your camera and your lens, things like that. I strongly recommend you put that on your phone to help you with depth of field problems. So this is the one that I shoot with. That's the one that's on the camera right now. Uh, it also comes with its own lens shade, and it comes with a nice bag from uh, Lumix. Uh, but it's very sharp and it's got that ultra wide F stop at 1.7. So it gets real nice, but you can see some of the other models they want and you can see some of the prices. This is what I keep. This particular model is what I keep on my, uh, uh, when I'm wandering around. That's not true. It's the one that I keep on there. Oh, it's not on here. Is the 14 to 42. So that's effectively a 28 to 80. Four lens. It's not on here. That's some of the zoom lenses. They don't have any prices. Is it not in stock? Let's see. We got one of the price. So this is a very good price. This is kind of one of their kit lenses, the 45 to 150. And you can see 147 bucks normally priced for prime members. It goes for 147. So that's not a, a not a bad price. All right. You can buy any of those. So I'm going to have to bounce back twice now. There we go. So let's go to you see me use a lot of soft boxes and the one that we used in the shot that we made is this soft box. You're going to skip the flash then? Uh, we're going to come back to it. Okay. I want to show the soft box first because I'm going to show the two soft boxes. All right. So this is the Godox strip. They call it a, a strip soft box. It's nine by 35, 22 by 90. Uh, it's $47. It's one of those that you put together. Uh, and once you put it together the first time, you really don't want to have to put it together a second time, honestly, because they're a pain to put together. But that's that's kind of the majority of these socks, soft boxes like that. And you can see, I'm going to show it to you. Oh, let me go back over here. And you can see I brought it in with me today. So, Ma. There, sh bold? there should not be anything rolling around in there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hang on. What are you doing? I'm trying to figure out what's rolling around in there. So this is what it looks like. So once you put it together, it's put together with these thick uh, wires, I guess, pieces of metal that uh, are spring, spring steel and you use four of them, they plug into this aluminum mount on the back. Now, this aluminum mount on the back is the standard, I'll show you, I'll show it to you here on the, uh, so this is a standard, industry standard um, Bowens mount. Oh, you're not seeing it. Okay, so this is an industry standard Bowens mount. Uh, it is designed for either continuous light or flash light uh, systems that mount straight to that Bowens mount. And you can see what makes it a Bowens mount. First of all, it's aluminum and it has these three little Frankenstein nubs on them. I don't know what else to call them. So I call them Frankenstein nubs. And your light that you buy will fit directly on that. It has a surface for that. This one, if you want to use a speed light like with my speed light, like this, right? If you want a speed light like that, it has to have a separate mount for it. And that's what this, this is right here. That actually comes with one of your Godox. You can buy it separately. It runs about 25 bucks separately. I think we'll show it later. But you need this to mount on yeah, that particular. Yeah, uh, you can buy it separately, but you need it to mount on uh, this, the strip flash. This literally has become my favorite light modifier, this particular uh, strip mount for the kind of work that I do, because a lot of it requires that I'm almost directly overhead of the shot 
behind it and facing forward towards the camera. And it's really easy to do with a crossbar uh, mount a, a uh, arm. Boom. Boom. You want to boom. show the picture of the boom holding it in the studio? Do we have it in there? Do we have it? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see if I, got, I want to go back to the album. Can right we see there. it here? Yeah. And so also in that other one where I'm That's standing. what it looks like when it's on a boom mount and a light stand. And here, like that for me is the perfect light where I have the uh, strip softbox over the shot and then kind of shooting forward uh, to, towards uh, from the back of the set towards the camera. And, and that's a shot that we got. I'll show you that shot. It's here's the final version of that. So that's the final version of that shot. And that's the lighting I did with the reflector. Shelly was holding the reflector uh, that uh, gave me some light right here because I had some basil. Uh, it was kind of limp basil. I hated it. I, I bought it at, bought it two days before and it went limp on me. Um, but I needed this lighted up. And this this is a bowl that she Shelly loaned me from her house, right? You had it at your house. And it, what, what was it doing at your house? I mean, it's by the front door. You can put stuff in it. Keys and things like that. Yeah, or mail if you have to go. So anyway, I just thought it was a beautiful bowl and I thought I wanted to do a shoot with it, but it fills my frame. But if we go back to that, you can see uh, the light is shooting forward uh, towards the shot. Shelly's giving me reflected light here. And, and then on this side, the flower on this side went dark on me. So what I, I did is I took a eight and a half by 11 sheet of printer paper, folded it in half, and then just put it right there for the light. And you can see it shows up very, it filled in that, uh, let me go this way. It filled in that little light right there. So I had some definition there. And then what I wanted is the background to be completely dark with only a hint of the uh, flowers in the background. But that forward shooting thing, get good. If you're shooting still lifes, especially small sets, learn to use that ability to shoot from behind and forward because that's what- Light from behind and forward. What did I say? Shoot from behind. Oh, no. Light from behind and forward uh, because that's what gives you this- uh, this depth, this roundness in these objects. That's what makes it look that way. And then just use a reflector to fill in the places because some of this will have a tendency to go dark. And as you can see, I didn't want this to go dark on me. I wanted uh, it so beautifully designed that I didn't want it to go dark. I wanted to be able to see that. So it's got kind of a Roman feel to it. I don't know. Uh, and I cut up all those heirloom tomatoes into my dinner last night. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these things, I'll just go, I'll go to, uh, you know, a grocery store, buy them all, take the shot, and then I've got more vegetables that I'll use in, you know, in the next week. So I got to share them with uh, Shelly. Anyway, that's the light that I used with that. Uh, and, uh, and I use flash. And in my case, I use a speed light uh, because that's what I have, right? I like the speed light. So let me go back kind of to where we were in order. So let's go to this the regular one. Box? Yeah. So let's go to the Godox 24 um, by 24 soft box. Now, one of the immediate advantages of buying this model is it comes with that speed light mount. And as a matter of fact, uh, you would have to get a separate Godox, I, I'm sorry, Bowens mount to use it with any other uh, light. But this is convenient because I use it for speed light. Let me show you how it packs up. That's not the reflector. That's the that's soft those box? the reflectors do are bigger, huh. right? That so funny? that's the soft box, and it also comes with a grid system, right? Oh, you know what? It doesn't like it on the screen when I do that. Uh, it also comes with a grid in front of it, so it gives it more directional. Here's what's cool about it. I'm gonna. This is this is a monster to pop open. It's one of those that you fold up. Uh, and it has a steel spring frame, right? So Can it looks like that. Throw it across the room and where <laughs> and nobody's standing. Honestly, <laughs> you're better off literally throwing it across the room because you're never sure what it's going to do when it's open. I usually grab one end and I put it over there and let it go. It's like opening champagne. Like that. <laughs> okay. So that's what it looks like. And then it, I'm going to put it back on full screen. I should have you doing this. Wait, right. this is a newer. You're showing a go I'm sorry. It's this, they're all the same. Honestly, oh. they're all the same manufacturer and then they're rebranded. Uh, 
Oh, uh, the, the two others that I have are uh, Godox, but they're the same thing and they look like that, right? And you remember on the uh, other one that I showed you, it had that aluminum mount. This one doesn't. It has this spring, what I'll call, these are the springs that make up the box. And what you do is you take your flash mount and you scrunch it into the springs. And that's, it takes two hands to do it, so I'm not going to be able to do it. But that's how it works. And then you mount your speed light uh, in there. You clamp it down, you clamp down your speed light in that. And um, my son and I were recently asked, asked to shoot the um, portraits at the Marine Corps ball, the annual Marine Corps birthday party ball. And I used two of those, and I used them all night to shoot uh, portraits. And I have some of those someplace. I'll show them to you the next time. Um, but this flash is good for jewelry because with jewelry, you don't shoot from behind. You shoot from in front. And it's a nice even light. As you can see, it also has <clears throat> Do you mean a light from in front? Pardon me? You said you shoot from in front rather than behind. Do you mean lighting or shooting? I'm, I mean lighting okay. and shooting. But yeah, when you, when you shoot jewelry, you light it from the front. Sometimes one light, sometimes two lights. You don't light jewelry from the back because it creates unwanted shadows that uh, that you don't want uh, in jewelry. Um, but lighting it from the front at a 45 degree angle also avoids the the uh, unnecessary highlights of jewelry. It shoots it a little bit flat so everybody can see the detail. And we're going to be doing one of those this weekend with a couple of pieces. So we're going to share that with you uh, next week sometime. So if you don't want to get a soft box to get it, although I think it's a great price and it's very useful and it's a very comprehensive soft box. You can go back and you can buy the mount. Where do I have it? You can mount it separately, right? And that way you can use it on the your square boxes, your rectangular boxes, almost any others, if you shoot with flash as opposed to studio lights, which are either now continuous LED uh, or um, or flash. You can buy them either way. A little bit more expensive for me. The speed lights are more versatile because I can use a speed light on a camera by itself or I can use it for all these. And I'm going to show you the speed lights that I use in just a minute. Uh, and they're, uh, they're very, very, very good. Okay. So I don't know, these should be in two different orders here. I can't do it once I've opened the store. So let's talk about the flash. The flashes I use are the Godox V60 Model 2s. Uh, I don't think the Model 3 is out. It comes with a, um, I think the guide number is 95, if I remember correctly. Uh, but it has a built-in receiver. So you can control it with a wire, wireless transmitter and you can sync multiple lights. I think you can have up to eight channels and up to 20 lights on each channel. Now, that's a whole bunch of lighting. You, I, I can't imagine short of being a professional and shooting in inside the middle of Times Square at night. You'd want that, but uh, you can do that. It comes with several helpful accessories. Uh, it comes with a set of gels, uh, although I don't use them much. It comes with a kind of you know what? When I do that, you're not seeing any of that. <laughs> okay. There it is. Let's try that again. That's what happens so what when I'm you have two do, monitors. You think everybody can see it. Yeah. So uh, that's the flash itself. And I've noticed that when I go over it here, so there's the flash. There's the gels. It comes with a case. comes with one battery and a battery charger. And it comes with this faux softbox. So if you're doing portraits, you just put that on the front of the lens and it behaves uh, like front a- Front of the flash. Oh man, I am glad, so glad you're here to- Don't put it over the lens. Don't you put it over the lens, you won't be able to see anything. anything. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes with this flash stand, right? And it looks like this. So it's pretty clunky. I mean, it's big and it's heavy, but it should be. It's very durable. Uh, but the best feature of this particular model, let me see if they have a picture of it separately because I was so darned impressed. I guess it's only on here. The best feature of this flash is its lithium battery. I'm going to pop open, remind me that I'm in full screen mm -hmm. and that we need to go back to that, all right? Mm -hmm. Is the lithium battery. 
Uh, so I had two of these flashes when I ordered them. I got, and each one had a battery. I immediately ordered two more because my experience with flashes is they chew up batteries. Most of my flashes have been prior to this time have been, um, uh, uh, powered by double A batteries. And I'd get, if I was lucky on a night, you know, 80 to hundred flashes, depending on the distance and what kind of, whether I was using manual or through the lens, et cetera. And then I'd have to change batteries. I used one of these batteries on each flash uh, at the, the ball, at the Marine Corps birthday ball. Uh, I shot 120 portraits. And then uh, during the ceremony, I went in and shot with the flash on my camera, right? And I probably shot another 100 shots there. I then brought it home and I shot a full weekend's worth of studio shots using the same battery. And it was still showing as full. This is the most long-lived lived lithium battery for a flash I have ever owned. I have yet to use more than one flash at a time, right? I charge them both. I charge all four because I'm going, but I have never been in a situation where I have had to use the backup battery. That's how powerful these are. And for that reason alone, this product. Now, it does have a lot of features. You can see on the back right here, it all has all these controls for, oh, okay, thank you. That's a good, is that the change? Mm -hmm. See, um, you, you figured it out. So on the back here, it has all these features that enable you to co control the flash. It comes with a very thick manual, which I'd never read. I just go to the YouTube and I find somebody that's already done the review on it and I, I get it from them. Uh, but between that and the battery, it's a one hell of a great flash. And the other thing that it has that's really important is that it has a wireless receiver on it. Did I bring it in? I didn't bring it in. Uh, but we're going to see the model in here. And with that wireless receiver, it can be controlled from your camera with the wireless transmitter. And Godox, of course, makes a wireless transmitter to go along with it. And here's I was going to show you what it looks like when you put it in. So when you put it in the mount, it just fits like that. And you clamp it, clamp it down. You know what? I'm going to give you something else to do. <laughs> okay. As if you didn't have enough already. That's all right. You're in charge of screens. I can do it. How's that? I can do Since it. Since I'm doing all the talking here. It's not like our normal shows where you're doing all the talking in. Now sure. so, so it fits in that mount like that. This will turn. So if you want to see it from the camera angle, but this has a receiver on it. So uh, if you have uh, the Godox transmitter, uh, you can put on the camera. You can control uh, up to eight channels, and each channel can have up to 20 flashes on it. The most I've used at any one time is four on the same channel, and I can control all of them uh, for a portrait shot. Okay? So uh, go back to the screen for me. All right, so click on that so we can get out of that. So this is going to be funny. We'll just keep it here. How, how do we do that? And then you can handle uh, that. Let's get out of that. Right. So that's the Godot Flash. They do have sales there. Uh, if you buy one that's specific to your, if you buy a Flash with this power that's specific to your Nikon, your Sony, your Canon cameras, you're going to pay 280 and up. Uh, for a flash that has about the same thing. Uh, so they're very, they're relatively inexpensive, but they're very powerful for their price. And again, if if the next flash you buy uses uh, AA batteries, and I don't care how many it is, the last one I had that wasn't a lithium battery used six AA batteries. If you're buying a flash that uses AA batteries, you are making a mistake as a professional photographer. I can't think of another way to put it. Don't now, do it. Don't do it. No, do it. I don't I don't even have the transmitter in here. That really surprises me. Anyway. Anyway, well, let me see if it's down here someplace. Photography? Let me see if it's down there. No. No. So there's lights. Hmm. Well, that's kind of silly. So I do have the transmitter that goes along with it. It's called the X Pro. Uh, Godox X Pro wireless transmitter, and uh, it fits on top of your camera, and it's the one that can control up to eight channels, and each channel can have up to um, uh, 20 flashes on it. 
Uh, so what is that? I can't do the 160 flashes. It'll control at once. And you can modify each flash to suit your needs for the distance. I usually shoot through the lens, meaning it just stops when there's enough light that comes through the lens on the camera. That's what this little connector here is all about. But occasionally I'll shoot manual mode. Um, when I want a real low light photography, I control them with manual mode. And uh, you start at full flash and then you can... Uh, reduce it a, a stop at a time down to one 128th of a flash. Uh, uh, so it's very capable and you can just, you, each of your flashes you can be it? a different one. The X pro uh, Godox X pro. Okay. Did I you, have, did you add it to the store? I'm working on it. Okay. I gotta All find right. it first. Should be easy. So Godox X Pro, I'm kind of surprised I didn't include it in there. Now, let's go back. Wireless flash trigger? Yeah, that's it. That one? Right. But okay. so that one is for a Canon. It has to be a dash O for Olympus and Panasonic. Let me see if they have it. That's Nikon. That's Sony. <laughs> let's see if we can find the one for Olympus in Fuji X Pro, that's another Canon. So, so enter, um, enter X Pro dash O, Godox X Pro dash O. And, and the only reason I'm saying that is because what we use, whatever the dash letter, whatever your camera, so if you have a Canon camera, it will be X Pro dash C. Uh, if you have Nikon, N, uh, F for Fuji, S for Sony, O for Olympus and Panasonic. Okay. Did you find it? Go on uh, right there. Top one? Yep. Okay. So can you get it into the store for me as well? I don't know. <laughs> one thing at a time. Okay. All right. Well, if you can get it into the store, it's helpful. I, 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 don't know why I didn't add this to the store before that, but we'll uh, we'll have it there the next time. But here's another cool thing. So one of the other cool things about this flash is uh, Godox sells this little kit for it. And it's a set of adapters. Uh, and it includes uh, softbox. It includes gels. It includes barn doors. It includes that thing's called a snoot. So it can snoot. focus your snoot. It has a grid. <laughs> yeah, your snoot. What is that? What show is that? Your encore. The Chronicles of Evermore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it has a um, portrait uh, uh, reflector. So it has all these cool tools. It comes in this nice compact little box. Let me show it to you. So here's the box with all the all the items. And I'll just leave it up there on the screen so you guys can see it. So it doesn't do that really well. Let's click it on here, and that way we can see it in big time. There we go. So it comes with all these capabilities, but here's what's really cool. What did I just do? I'm just going to go to full screen. Oh, okay. Since you're showing it. All right. So it has all those adapters uh, for it, all in this compact little package. The thing that doesn't come in the package, and I don't know what, what, what it was, they went like, oh. So you have to have a mount for it that fits on your flash. Well, this is here, and when you get the box, when you get the uh, box from Amazon, it has a box for all of this because it folds up. I, I've got them all out of position right now. It has a box for this, and then it has a separate box for this. So I don't know why they didn't make the little nylon case big enough to include this piece right here. So let me go. So th what this does, similar to here's your flash, right? And what this does is it fits on the front of your flash. I'll open up the clamp here, right? Fits right on your flash, fl fits flush on your flash. And then you screw that down. Don't say that three times Yeah, past. it's a, a, a tough one to say. So you clamp that right down. And what it has right here on one of the objects is it has magnets. And so everything fits with magnets. So this is their softbox. Now, I haven't tried this yet with any of my food photography 
I, I haven't tried it, but if you want to add, say, uh, here, can you pull those apart because I got the magnet thing on them. Right. Yeah. So here's a very nice a little part more. Or is that it? Yeah. Every one of those is a different one. Oh, right. So here's a very nice flash diffuser, right? And if I want to put that on the front of the camera, I can use the magnets to do that, right? And then that has magnets, so I can put this in front of that. So it's like, how do the French say it? Tray cool. <laughs> so if I want to put, Tray chic. I didn't type this enough. So let's say I didn't want to use the flash by itself. I wanted to use the diffuser and then I wanted to use the directional grid. That'll pop right on there as well. So it's one of the, as usual with Godox, it is one of the best thought out little applications. If I wanted to limit the throw of light, I could use the diffuser and I want to direct it other than with the grid, I can use Barn doors. I can't do it with my right hand. I mean, my left hand. Barn doors. Magnetically attached. So it easy on, easy off, very useful stuff. Uh, again, I've used them for portraiture, especially um, the kind of portraiture, what do they call it? Uh, not extemporaneous, where you're candid. Candid portraiture. Uh, I did a lot of that work uh, when we were shooting at the Marine Corps Ball, and I just put this nice diffuser on it. So it softened up the light that was going out of the flash. And then you shoot the flash through the lens TTL and you get perfect shots every time. There wasn't one bad shot on the night uh, between, and I mean, from a lighting perspective. And you know how iffy flash can be sometimes. So I just put this on the front and used it for the candid photography. I used the soft boxes for the portraits, but I used this for the candid photography and they all came out great. Okay, so just tools. Here's some examples of how everything fits. You screw on the mount, and then everything uh, uh, fits with a magnet, and then it shows in here that you can just keep using, uh, adding pieces to it as you need it, right? And uh, when when it comes together in the package, it has, you know, five or six of them stuck together anyway, to, and you have to take those apart. Right there. You have to take those apart. That's the one that's the that um, my mouth, uh, my throat dried up. Uh, that's the one that has the soft uh, white. And then it also comes with a number of colored filters, blue and orange, depending on your lighting uh, situation. And that just fits into the main mount. So. Very cool, very convenient, uh, and very included in your shoulder bag when you're uh, shooting uh, candid photography where it's out in the street or, you know, the Marine Corps ball. If you or don't, wedding. Uh, almost every major mm -hmm. city uh, and some minor ones will have a Marine Corps birthday ball. and um, Or a prom. Or, or a prom. <laughs> and I didn't know it at the time, but they're always looking for photographers. Hmm. Apparently, because they can't afford to pay you a lot of money. Um, and my son volunteered to do it and then called me because he knew I would do, I, he wouldn't have to pay me for it, that I'd do it for free. Um, but by the end of the night, and I, and I was just, I was feeling good. I'm ex army. I spent uh, five years in the army rather than the Marine Corps. So I don't have that same sort of thing. But it was nice being there as uh, they were having this celebration. There's a middle thing where there's a couple of short speeches. They all they cut a birthday cake with a sword, which is kind of neat to see in and of itself. So um, so uh, it's kind of cool to be part of. And at the end of the night, uh, the woman handed uh, uh, my son, the woman who was running the operation, handed my son an envelope. And um, and uh, she asked us if we'd do it again next year. Uh, she was so happy with what we had done. She had seen some of the photos that Jason had uh, shared with her. You can go back one arrow. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's the way to do this, right? I keep yappity yapping. Mm -hmm. Why don't you yappity yap? Are okay. You... Let's what go to the LED solution uh, right there by this... the arrow. Yeah. 
So what we've talked about today in terms of flashes and softboxes can get pretty expensive, but one of the things I can strongly recommend is LED lights. And I bought a pair of these about three weeks ago because I saw them and you can see for Prime members, I don't know, is that a Prime coupon or an anybody coupon, the one that's $40 off? Coupon, save an extra $40 when you apply this coupon. No, it's just a coupon. Yeah. So this is normally priced at $149. And again, you'll find them. This is Fazistan. Ne newer has them. Godox has them. Almost all the major uh, uh, photo mm -hmm. accessory stores on Amazon uh, will have them. And that's because they're, you know, as I said, they're manufactured by one company and then rebranded by name by dozens of other companies. They're all in this price range. This is one that is single color. It's not bicolor, meaning it doesn't have both uh, 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 the yellow colored light, the tungsten light, and the blue colored daylight. This one is a single color, but it is intensity adjustable. So you can adjust the intensity from a very light thing to a very heavy thing if you want. Um, it's, uh, when somebody asked me about it, somebody in one of the Facebook chat rooms asked me, I said it was one by three. It's, uh, it's 30 by 60. 30 is slightly larger than one foot and 60 is slightly larger than, um, three feet. Uh, but they're controllable. It comes with a hand controller and you can control groups of the lights at once up to 12 lights. And I wanted to try it out because it was a soft light. And I thought, well, a lot of the still life photography you shoot is done with what is referred to as the impression of north window light. That's kind of what you're trying to do with, uh, that's what the uh, artists of old did. They used a north, uh, north facing window, north light. And I thought, well, I wonder if I can substitute it and it's continuous light. So you have a little bit more control as you look at it. Now I tether my Lumix camera. Uh, the Lumix cameras have a wireless uh, uh, component to them. So I can tether it to my iPad using wireless. And as I'm looking at the tethered image, it's a full size image on my 12.9 iPad. Um, I can see what that light is doing. I found it. So it's a little bit more difficult to get directional. And I'm going to, I think I have a picture of that here. Let me see if I've got that particular picture. So this is oh, some work that I, here it is right here. So this is some work that I was doing the other night. You'll see my, that's, as you can see, I'm working on my, in my kitchen on my dining room table. Uh, but in order to get the look that I wanted, which was kind of a dark food photography, I had to pull it way forward, put it above. I usually shoot with, uh, with, uh, with it above. So I put it on the boom arm and I had to keep uh, uh, pointing it towards the camera as a result, I had to keep raising it as well so it didn't go into the camera lens. I, I had the shade on the camera lens. But let me show you the shot that I got from that combination of yellow reflector, gold reflector, and this LED light. Uh, very low priced, very lightweight, very easy to assemble. It's portable. Now, I'm going to give you the bad news about this, but it was my fault. I was working... All afternoon. You're going to show them the shot and then you're going to. Oh, yeah, back. let's go back and, and do the shot first. So let's find the shot that I did. Did I upload it? I wonder if I uploaded it. Mm, I don't see it. No, I don't either. All right. And we'll I just, you know where I can page. go? I can go to here. Let me take me off there and let me go to Pexels because it's on Pexels. All right. <laughs> Put Open up a new tab for me, would you please? So this is uh, an interesting light because it it come you know you can roll it up and it's lightweight. Um, you kind of put it together yourself by create uh, pushing the frame together and then unrolling the light on top of the frame. And right. it sticks with Velcro. Velcro. Hook with, and loop. Hook and loop. Some the, people call it. The there's uh, some Russian people that were doing uh, a Russian woman who's doing a Russian YouTube on how to use this. And I, uh, they don't use Velcro. They use hook and loop, but they there's no Russian phrase for it. Mm -hmm. So it's like they say hook and loop. So this is the shot that I made with that setup. And you can see that I got the lighting effect that I wanted. I want the flowers less lit and then the background just in that lit enough so that you can get a sense there is a background there. But that was the combination of the uh, LED light 
and the reflector. And the reason I needed the reflector is because this side of this dark bowl, and this is another one that I found at a, uh, a thrift shop. It's a, it was a very, very nice, very antique looking bowl for four ninety nine. you know, uh, but I needed the <laughs> but gold. we're not selling thrift stores. So we're not stuff. selling thrift store stuff. You can probably <laughs> find one on Amazon. Um, but as you look at it right here, I needed that gold reflector to fill this and give it a little bit of uh, depth uh, dimension so you, it just didn't fall out uh, black. So again, there's my Pexels channel. You can find me Pexels and then- But at, we're not going to send people gonna, off. We're going to send uh, people off uh, Amazon. That we don't want to do that. Platform. So let's go back there over go. here. There's the light. And, um, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, I tried uh, using it. I haven't used it for jewelry. I have tried it for still life and dark food photography. Uh, I would say that it is a broad light. I mean, it's a it puts out a lot of a wide area of light. Uh, so it's very even lighting, I guess. Uh, and sometimes you don't want that in still life. I think it would make a pretty good portrait light, uh, lighting from one side and then uh, as a key light, and then use a second one as a film light and just turn it down to half of what the key light is. That would work, or a hair light or even a background light. So it could be used for that. I mean, the cool thing about it is, I didn't bring one with me, but let's see, do they have one on here? On what? Uh, the package that comes in and it, it rolls up and it comes with a canvas bag and shoulder strap that's about that big, about that high. It's very compact and it's AC operated, not battery operated. Uh, so it has an, uh, a brick that comes with it. Uh, that uh, it, I, I've read that it'll the work. Bag. There it is. There's the bag. Right. I've read that it will work off a 12 volt, uh, I'm sorry, 24 volt um, portable power pack. Um, and they do have them on here. We should probably add one to the, uh, to the uh, store. So the next time. Mm, power pack. So did you, were you able to get the V pro or the V, the X pro max mm -hmm. into the store? No, I haven't done that yet. Okay. Well, let's just go to it. So I wanted to, it's, we'll add it to the store it's in, the, in the carousel. Mm -hmm. It should be at the end. Because the last thing I added. So that thing. Am I going the wrong way? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not showing up there. But it is here. What do you want to show? The well, let's just go, go there and... Enter. Oh, I can do it from here. X. So it's a Godox X Pro. Oh. Dash. Oh. But oh. Yeah. Oh. There it is, right on top. Okay. So uh, you saw this in some of the pictures and and uh, the video that we showed you earlier. That's the. Uh, wireless transmitter, flash transmitter. So this communicates with all your flashes. You can see that you have A, B, C, D, E. There are some below that, F and G. And then each one of them can support up to uh, 20 flashes. So you can have 180 flashes connected to this wireless transmitter. The difference in the X Pro O and any other is it depends uh, because when you buy the Godox flashes, you have to buy them for camera specific. They don't have a universal flash. So you buy the Godox dash O, you buy the uh, X Pro dash O. If you have Canons, it's dash C, Sony dash S, Nikon dash N, and Fuji dash F. So they do have them for all those models. This is uh, runs around 70 bucks and that enables you so you don't have to go around and mess around with the flash. You can control all your flashes uh, from the camera, from behind the camera. And then you can use your tether to see what's happening or whatever you're tethering, whether it's your laptop, your desktop, or in my case, my iPad, whatever you're tethering with, you can see the results of whatever changes you make. Now, this one does run on AA cells, but I've had this since before. So the Marine Corps ball was November 6th. I shot the Marine Corps ball and all the studio photography that I've done since then, and I'm still on the same set of batteries, and it's still showing as full. So I don't know what magic Godox or whatever the Chinese manufacturer that makes these has done when it comes to powering them. It's a wireless transmitter, so it's not putting out flash or uh, shutter uh, level of power, 
or uh, or uh, consumption. So I'm still using the same set of AA cells that I loaded when I went to the Marine Corps ball, and and that there was you know 200 shots or so. Um, so and I was controlling two different lights when we were uh, in portrait mode. So again, highly recommended. And again, it's this one. The O model is for Olympus Panasonic, but you can buy them for your own model, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony. And make sure you note that it's a dash O whether you're buying the flash uh, or the uh, wireless transmitter. The wireless receiver is built into the flash. You don't have to buy anything separate for the flash like the olden days. Okay, I'm going to go back to my, can I go back to my store from here? Well, you can go to one of these and then go back. Yeah, that's probably, let's do it that way. No, nope, can't from there because I opened it. Mm. I see, I opened all these with the oh. open in another tab. Never mind. So uh, let's see, let's go here. Let's go back to full store. screen. Go back to full screen while I'm doing this. Store.videotear.com. <laughs> that's okay. What are we talking about next? Uh, let me see. I'm gonna open. This What's one. up next? What's up next? And I can hide. So we got uh, plan flash. That we talked about that. Um, stands. Light, light stands. stands. Okay, so the light stands that you saw in all those shots are uh, the newer two-piece light stands. They're aluminum. I'm, I'm sorry, they're stainless steel. They're a little bit heavier, but they're far more durable. And as you can see right here, they go up to 114 uh, inches, which is 10 feet, two inches. Uh, that's a hell of a light stand. And all the hardware is it, it is very, very on the durable side of things. I mean, it's you, you can tell it's just a well-made product. One of the cool things I like about it that I don't get on other light stands is you can see right here, it has the ability, so it has that uh, mount, uh, whether it's a light mount or any other accessory mount. And on one side, like most of these, it has the quarter inch, you know, quarter inch by 20. And then you flip it over and it has the three eighths inch mount, which you can fit in most tripod heads. But what's cool on this is you can either mount it, uh, I can't do this at, at once. So I'm gonna open the picture again. So you can either mount it vertically like it is here or horizontally. So if you have one of those LED lights and you want to mount it uh, horizontally, you can just screw it in there and you don't need an additional ball mount. These, so I can't even remember when I bought these. That's how long it's been, but they're durable. They are a little bit heavier. So when we do field shoots, we have a set of smaller aluminum tripods that we use less they're, they're just about half the weight. Uh, so they aren't really designed to move around, but I did take them to the Marine Corps ball and I put them in my, I have a little rolly basket that I put everything in and it worked fine. Uh, but I can recommend these because they are unbreakable. That's the last, that's the last set I bought. I had a, bought a set that I bought before that back in 2018, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, but we use these for pretty much everything. Uh, they scrunch down their stainless steel, heavy duty, uh, they don't feel the the feet are spread out far enough so that if you do put a boom arm on it, uh, it you're not going to feel like it's going to fall over uh, on you. Um, and, and when you use a boom arm, you're going to weigh one end of the boom arm with whatever you're using as a light modifier, and then you're going to have a sandbag on the other end. So let's go to the boom arm. Let's talk about that. All right. I think that's next on the list. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. Now, this is referred to as a boom. Calling it a boom in, in an arm is redundant. Um, some people call it a crossbar, but it is not a crossbar. A crossbar actually fits across on two stands so that you can put, you know, like a background behind it. What is cool about this boom arm is uh, several things. Number one, it acts like a boom arm right here. Let me, again, I'm going to go to... Uh, this shot. So it acts like a boom arm right there. So it holds up a light. And what's unique about this one is it also has the fixtures on it so that if you want to hold a reflector other than the, in the vertical position, say you want to hold it over uh, uh, a set and you want to put it at an angle, it has the capability to do that. 
it has that feature. So it enables you to do that. It comes as part of the boom arm. The other cool thing about it is it doesn't have a sandbag. It has a weight bag. And, and the neat thing about weight bag is that it will hold up to a one gallon container. So you can balance it based on the water that's in the container. And then you can put the container inside uh, the bag. I suppose and, you could also use like if you had a dumbbell. You're yeah, right. dumb, almost anything. I have dumbbells at home. I and, could just stick one right, in Right, stick one in there and look for the balance in that. Sandbags are kind of a pain because none of them are uh, spill proof. They have usually have two zip. They have two sides. They have two zippers on each side, and um, and you're going to spill some sand. I they used leak, to use. They all leak sand. I used to use uh, pea gravel so that it didn't come out. And I also, before back in the olden days when it wasn't so expensive, I used to use uh, shot, um, shotgun shell shot. Uh, and that works really, really well. But this one has the bag that enables you to use a half gallon jug and or a gallon jug, up to a gallon jug, and you just fill it with water. And that way, try to get make sure you get one of the screw tops on, like an orange juice one, because they have the screw tops. The pop-off tops, eh, sooner or later, it's going to pop off. Um, but uh, it's very cool that way, because when, when you're on the light stand, you want it perfectly balanced. You're going to keep moving it back and forth on this mount right here, right there. You'll move it back and forth until uh, the boom arm and the and the weight on the back are perfectly balanced that's what's the safest and you know lighting technicians the guys in the film industry we work with a lot of them and they spend a lot of time making sure those things are perfectly balanced uh and then every once in a while you'll balance it and then you realize the arm is not out far enough so you have to pull it out further and rebalance it. And, and it takes a lot of time, not a lot of time. It takes time and it takes patience, but I'm going to strongly recommend that you do that uh, because that's the safest thing that you can do. In addition to that, when it's balanced like that and you want it out of the way, you can just raise it up on the light stand. So everything's not, you're not bumping head, your head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I'm notorious for tripping over stuff, light stands, tripods. And of course that puts everything out of position. You have to reposition it, but I'm also notorious for walking into sandbags. And, uh, and so uh, when you have it perfectly balanced like that, you can just raise it up off the light stand on the light stand. So the sandbag and the uh, light are not anywhere near your head. So this is one of the better well-designed boom arms and it's very functional, has a lot of cool things. Uh, that it does with it. Uh, and I especially like the ability for it to uh, be used as a reflector. You want to take a break? We're getting close to being finished, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we are. Sorry. <laughs> it's almost too hard. We're having too much fun here. So, okay, let me see what's last on my list here. I think we're down to the, oh, so one of the things that you want to get in order to mount your reflectors on a light stand are these newer two-piece portable studio photography background and reflector disc holder clips. They're just, they just come in handy and you'll see them used. Uh, let me go back to our BTS right here. So you can see right here, I just put it on a light stand. Shelly helps me with a lot of these shots. This is on a light stand and right up at the top is one of those clips that holds it in place. So I don't have to do it. And when Shelly's not here, she doesn't have to do it. So let's talk about last but not least, we have those and then we have the, and you can feature the uh, reflectors. Now, these are not the reflectors I own. I'm going to show you that. These are not the reflectors these you're are, looking these for. These are not the reflectors you're looking for. So this is the reflector that I own. It's the same brand. Is that a Sellens? Yeah. yeah. It's the same brand. And these, here we go, they're, you fold, they're the taco fold, grab it by the handle and let it pop out. Did I smack it there? And just the chair. Okay. I'm fine. Chair's sturdy. Give me full screen. Oh, full screen. Here comes full screen. So, because I don't think you can see me otherwise, can you see me otherwise? Okay. Here's what they look like. They're five in one. And the reason they're five in one is it comes with these covers, right? And one cover, one side of the cover has white and gold. And then if you want the other colors, they're on the inside of the cover. And I'm going to open them just a little bit so you can see it. And the inside is silver and black. 
Why do you need a black reflector? Because you're doing a light a, a shot that doesn't require light on one side of your shot, so use the black reflector. And then in the middle is a translucent one. And what's cool about this reflecting the green screen behind us? What's cool about the translucent one? Giving away our secrets. Is uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, what's cool about the translucent one is you can use it as a flash modifier. So you can set up the translucent one towards your subject. And, and there was a period in my videography, uh, well, I was always a documentary maker, but I started rather than carrying a whole light set around with me, I would carry a small light set and two of these. And one I would use to shoot through the translucent um, uh, reflector, it isn't a reflector, it's translucent. So one that's on the inside. And then the other I'd use as a fill for uh, either silver or gold, depending on how I wanted the personal look. So it was very convenient. Now here's what's uh, different about this. So when I bought the square ones, um, let's see if they even have them anymore. When I bought the square ones, they were available. And as you can see, the square see ones, anything. oh, they can't see anything. Of course they can't see anything. There we go. So when I bought mine, mine were square, right? And they were about the same price as these rectangular ones. So these, oval. The, oh, is that what they call them? Oval. Oh, okay. So the ones I have are uh, 24 inch square, which is just perfect for the kind of work that I do. Uh, you can see they come in 24 by 36, 32 by 48. They get these get progressively bigger, but. Um, they're not even listed anymore. Right after I bought the square ones, they went out of stock and they haven't come back. So the only thing here, here is the square reflector. Let me see if I can actually go to it. They might even be back in stock. We might be able to change this, but they come in all shades, ovals, circles, triangles, and they had squares. Let's see. Yeah, it's I'm been... Available. It's been out of stock since I bought it. I paid around the $25 for it. So you have to go to either the triangles, the circles. They're not super the, different from the oval, though. It's just a different shape. Yeah, the oval Everything will else do is fine. The same. Or the triangle will do fine. Again, it's the kind of photography you want. What I liked about these, of course, is they're, they're very compact. You can fold them up into that bag. And they have these handles on them. So the person that's helping you has something to grab. By because if you've ever used one that doesn't have the handles, they're always cumbersome. Like, where do you grab it from? Especially uh, if it's breezy. Especially if it's breezy. So uh, just keep an eye out for them. They may come back if you really need the square ones. If not, go ahead with the ovals or the circles. Uh, the circles also, they're made, again, by Selens. Now, uh, uh, Selens seems to be the major kind of pusher behind these, but they're also they're also uh, branded by other companies, some of the other major manufacturers. And you can get this, this is a 32 inch one. This is a 24 inch. And they also, that's funny. They make a 48 inch round. 43. So a uh, 43 inch round. And they're uh, pretty much, these are even less expensive. You know, the 32 inch are 24 bucks. So that's pretty darn cheap for uh, that kind of five in one reflector service sur surface. Um, so, and that was, again, my faux pas was I bought the squares and I got those, I was replacing them. They were less expensive and they were five in one as opposed to multiple pieces. And I was replacing them and I bought them. And then uh, I was on one of the Facebook groups and I posted a behind the scenes thing and somebody asked about the reflectors and, you know, where can I get them? I sent them to the store and they, uh, when they went, they wrote me back on the Facebook page that they were no longer available and they haven't been available for pretty close to a month and a half now. So they may come back. I'm sure they will come back. Maybe they just, you know, I showed them off and everybody. But that's okay. Them everybody they're just a different them. shape. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing about them that we, you, you couldn't replace with uh, the ovals, you know, or the circles or even the triangles. I mean, it's not. The, the ovals they, even have three handles. Yeah. And the and the thing about that, what you're looking for is um, you want to you first thing that I always look for is portability. What's portable? Because I'm gonna I know sooner or later I'm gonna have to lug it someplace. And then second is or if you want to put it away, or if I want to put it away. And I don't know how you how good you guys are at doing the taco fold on these things. I've gotten really good. Shelly has gotten good over the years. I'm awesome. Uh, and, um, and, uh, that's from our, uh, like I said, our film background, uh, yeah. we got really good at that. Uh, 
so I look for portability and I look for durability. Uh, and price, you know, is I, I consider price, but there's a point at which you you don't want to fool around with price too much. If, if uh, Amazon seems to know that when I come on and I start looking at reflectors, it goes, oh, you're a prime guy. You get the coupon. I think they know like, oh, Toby's on. He's going to buy something if we give him a price. You know, that's how I feel about it. So I do want to I do want to show you one other thing uh, since it is on Amazon product. Right. All right. I want to show okay. you, <laughs> Shelly and I have written a book. Yes, we did. And it's called A Gypsy's Kiss. And A Gypsy's Kiss comes from the story in the book. Now, it uh, it's, the, it's a story that's based on my life when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, but we wrote the book. It's very nice. You can look at some of the reviews. It's got very positive reviews. Um, you know. This one guy, the guy that did the one star, I asked him, I wrote back and he changed his review and I didn't even have to threaten him. So, um, and but if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read for free. Yeah. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you get for free. I think Kindle is eight bucks and paperback is 50. Good little book. Uh, and we put a lot of work into it and uh, it actually had a treasure hunt associated with it. Uh, but um, treasure was found. Treasure was found. Yeah. So we're not going to push that again. So tomorrow night, we'll be on uh, tomorrow night, Friday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And we're going to be talking. Shelly will be streaming in from her house. Uh, and we will be talking about our studio, the equipment. I'll, I'll do a short video for you uh, to do that. And we're going to be talking about the equipment we use in our studio and explaining why we selected that. We have been live streaming, the two of us. I, I started, my first live stream was in, 2009 and that particular live stream required a big truck and um and 10 people um and then we got serious about digital live streaming meaning meaning we could get everything it, all of that equipment had been reduced to a box about the size of a big pack of cigarettes and we started that in 2014 we went live on youtube in 2017 and since then, we're, what you're seeing us on is a product called StreamYard, which enables us to simultaneously stream not only to Amazon Live, but to our Facebook pages, uh, YouTube pages, Twitter account. And in Shelly's case, when she live streams, she can go to her LinkedIn account. It so, looks like you added my LinkedIn to this. <laughs> oh, I did? <laughs> looks like you did. Oh, yeah, you're up there. So we're going to one, two, three Facebook pages one LinkedIn account, two YouTube channels, a Twitter page, and Amazon Live. So, uh, so, uh, and all the accoutrement, the logos. And the, <laughs> we're not at two hours huh. yet. We started at one. We're mm -hmm. only one hour and 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. That is my cue to finish tonight's uh, show. Any last words? No. Uh, if you want to purchase something, add to cart, please do. If you have any questions about photography, videography, podcasting, a home studio, uh, anything like that, please let us know. You can uh, find our information in the crawl there. And um, support at videotarot.com is where you can write to us. And that's in the crawl down below. And please follow us at follow.videotarot.com. That's our Amazon live channel. And we will be doing live streaming there two to three times every week. Maybe more if we really get to like so around a lot of fun. So if you like what you see, please tell your friends and make sure you follow. And uh, if you want to go to the store, if you want to buy something from the store, remember it doesn't cost you any extra. If you're buying it from our store, you pay the same price that you would if you buy it from yourself. But Amazon gives us a little commission because you uh, bought from the store. And our store is at store.videotarot.com. And as Shelly said, our live stream channel is at follow.videotarot.com. So just go there and click on the follow button. Whenever we schedule a live stream or whenever we go live, you'll be informed and as a result in the know. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. We really enjoyed it. Let's do a little bit of an outro here. And then we will see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on this channel look for a um, scheduling link that should pop up in the next hour or so, all right?